one of the first things I made this week was banana bread because I had bananas in the uh, freezer. So I made some banana bread so we could snack on that. I'm gonna send this half down to Philip's dad. So for tonight's meal, I'm making rice with barbecue chicken and I'm gonna cut up some of these mini bell peppers and fry those up and put them in with the barbecue or the chicken. And that's what we're gonna have tonight. So if you had watched one of my other videos, one of the things I showed you in my freezer was I had a package of barbecue chicken breast and this is what they look like. So um, I'm gonna flip those over. I'm just cooking on top of the stove because they were still frozen. Actually, it looks like I'm boiling. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna cook these up. Once they get a little bit more close to being cooked, I'm going to, um, yeah, look, there's the garlic in there. I'm gonna chop up those peppers and add it to it. In the meantime, I'm gonna get my rice. So I have two cups of rice in here. I, it's fancy long grain rice. I rinse it off. I'm trying to figure out how to cook rice. I'm not very good at it. Um, on the stove or even in my um, pressure cooker, I find that it gets really starchy. So I'm gonna rinse it today to see if that helps. So I rinse that all off, put that in here. Um, so I have two cups of rice. So what I need to do is get four cups of water. I'm gonna get cold water. There's two cups. Actually, I think I'm gonna go and grab a thing of chicken stock. So that's the whole purpose of the pantry challenge, right? Is to use stuff out of my pantry. So I already put two cups of cold water in there. I'm gonna add two cups of chicken broth. So my chicken looks good here. I'm just gonna add all these peppers to it. And just let that simmer for a little bit let the peppers cook up actually I'm gonna I think I'm gonna add an onion to this so of course I missed the time uh, so I'm going to vent oh. maybe it's already vented let's see nope need to vent it So I'm just venting my pressure cooker. I missed the time. I wanted to get it when there was a minute left and I missed it. So we'll see what this is like here in a second. Looks good. I think I'm gonna let it set for a, uh, maybe I should, maybe I should uh, fluff it up now. See, it always looks wet to me. Wet and sticky. All right, there's no water at the bottom, so I'm just gonna let it sit here for a second. See, to me it looks sticky. Please, someone tell me what I'm doing wrong. So after I added the onion, I did put in a couple tablespoons of water just because it was thickening up so much. And I turned my stove to minimum. I'm gonna turn up to maybe two just to allow these peppers to cook. Now I'm gonna check on my rice. Okay, so I left the cover off my rice and I turned my heat up a little bit more with the chicken and the peppers and the onions because it didn't seem like the onions were cooking. So I turned it up to about four degrees, or four degrees, four on my stove and yeah, I'm gonna wait a couple minutes and plate this up. So there we are, day two. I guess I forgot to tell you what I had for breakfast. Um, I think I had, I think I skipped breakfast. And I had the uh, soup left over from yesterday and a bagel for lunch. So today's supper is the uh, barbecue chicken. Looks pretty good. Now to taste it. Hmm. 
pretty good. I wish I uh, kept the recipe to know what I put in the actual bag. <laughs> I'm gonna have to search for another recipe to make this again sometime. Oh well, lesson learned, keep my recipes. So the first meal of 2024 that I made was this homemade chicken noodle soup. Um, my son has dry land tonight for hockey. So I'm just gonna heat some of that up for him. It was left over and that's what he'll have tonight. So I had to transfer to a bigger bowl because my son likes nothing but crackers in with his soup. So I actually picked out quite a bit of the carrots. Um, yes, my son has grown. He's 15, but he's also my baby boy. And some of you are gonna be like, oh, I wouldn't pick the damn carrots out for my child. That's okay, because he ain't your child. So I'm trying to video everything that we do this week for meals. And my kids just called me. It is 20 after 11 at night, and of course they're hungry. So they're gonna help me out with their uh, pantry challenge. They don't know they are, but they're having crap dinner. And hot dogs. <laughs> They called, asked for money. I said, nope. So guess what? If mom's doing this challenge, the whole family's doing the challenge. So of course the hot dogs that I took out were frozen. So they want to have their hot dogs cut up in their craft dinner. So I don't know. I'm just going to throw the frozen hot dogs in there as soon as the macaroni is pretty much cooked. I'll save these for tomorrow. Um, today's supper pretty much was completely eaten so I'll save these for tomorrow and I did take out over there in the back I did take out um, some hot dog buns so Philip can have the hot dogs tomorrow for lunch so for breakfast today my youngest son had Waffles, just egg waffles to put in the toaster, and I made him some blueberry sauce to go on top of it. I guess to be fancy. Um, blueberry compo. <laughs> and I just had an everything bagel that was in the freezer and some of the cream cheese that I found in the fridge. So we have our own chickens. So we get, right now we're only getting one or two eggs a day, so my oldest son will have hash browns here in the air fryer and um, some of the eggs that we get from our chickens. So I'm also not letting, not letting, I'm also not buying any um, tea. Usually every morning Philip and I have tea from Tim Hortons, so I've decided not to buy that as well. Now if he goes out and he buys me one, I'll still drink it. So I'm just making my tea this morning with my own honey, and I just called Philip because we are already out of milk. So hopefully he'll bring that before my tea's too cold. If not, I'll microwave it. So yesterday for lunch, we had um, hot dogs and a couple buns left. Philip said they were a little dry, a little hard on one side, so I thought I would take some meatballs out of the freezer. You know, those, they're already pre-cooked. And I'm gonna try to make us meatball subs for lunch. I don't need all of these meatballs, so it's only Philip and I for lunch, so I'll probably just take out, I'm thinking if I can put four meatballs on a sub, I'll take out 12 meatballs and I'm gonna simmer them. So I'll get out my pot. I have um, my tomato sauce that I made this year, so I'm going to put this in with it. When I make my tomato sauce, I keep it pretty basic. The only thing I put in there is garlic, onions, and basil, and tomatoes, of course. Um, yeah, so garlic and onions is the only thing I add to my tomato sauce, just so that if I need it for anything, then I can add all those other things to it. So with the uh, meatball subs, uh, Philip had mentioned last night when we were eating supper that or actually later at night um, when I would have popcorn. We had the fish last night for supper and I had two pieces of fish and I said to him, I don't know if I'm still hungry or if I'm craving something. So I went and made popcorn and he said he was craving um, a tossed salad with French dressing. So I'm gonna make him one of those for lunch to go with his meatball subs because I have a little bit of this romaine lettuce left and I don't want it to go to waste. So I have some cucumbers that I had, peppers, uh, green pepper and a red pepper, a uh, little bit of um, spring onion or green onion I had in the fridge. I actually, um, sometimes I'll get these at Walmart or whatever, when they're on, not on sale, but on that reduced um, cart that they have there. 
I'll get those and then I'll bring them home and I'll put them in my windowsill and I'll put um, a little bit of water in and they just keep growing. But I forgot to do that. They were in my fridge, so I cut them up last night. So I want to use these up quickly and I have some celery. So between and a yellow pepper in between the salad. So I think I'll use the romaine, the cucumber, um, and I'll put a little bit of green pepper. And just for color, I'll put a little bit of red and yellow pepper and a little bit of that onion. Um, and not to waste it, I'll actually put the rest of the pepper and a little bit of celery in with the beef ball subs because we all know that fresh green pepper and cooked green pepper have a different texture. So. So I have all my red pepper, yellow pepper, and I have some green pepper and celery in there already chopped up. I'm gonna put this in with my meatballs and I just chopped up the rest of it. Um, I'm not gonna use all that. So I have a little bit of celery, green peppers, red peppers, yellow peppers in there. I'm not gonna use that all in Philip's salad, but I thought I would just cut it up and then put it in a Ziploc bag and throw it in the fridge. So that if I need any vegetables or any peppers that I wanna add to dinner this week, I can so I'm just gonna oops it's really hard to do this with one hand anyways okay I'm just gonna put that in there it's already started to simmer I'm gonna mix it up and put it on low and let this set until pretty much just before Philip comes home for lunch okay so lettuce is done vegetables are are got up um, I got a quite a bit of lettuce here I actually might have myself a Caesar salad and Philip will have his tossed out with French dressing. So, um, this has been simmering for a while. It's very watery to me. So, what I'm gonna do is. So, a couple weeks ago, I. Hard to do with one hand. I had made some tomatoes. I had, oh God, I had to have had at least 20 pounds of tomatoes, if not more, in my freezer. So, what I had done is I actually freeze dried a bunch. I simmered it down probably 24 hours and then I put it through the put it through the food mill and then uh, once I get into a liquid consistency put it on the trays for the freeze dryer froze it and then I freeze dried it then put it into my blender so I'm hoping that this will help thicken it up a little bit it's like if I wanted to make tomato paste um, I could just take a little bit of this powder, put a little bit of water in it, not a lot, and get it to the consistency I want. So, yeah, like I noticed a little bit of a difference there already. So I think I'll put a little bit more in. Just so that it's thick when I put it on the sub buns. Alright, mix that up and see what all right, so I have the hot dog buns left. Philip had said yesterday a couple of them were a little bit uh, hard because they were in the freezer. So yeah, a little harder on the bottom, but that's okay because we're gonna toast them anyways. So I'm gonna get four ready. There's three across there and one across the side. And just before, I'm gonna call Philip here in a minute to see if he's coming home and when he does, I'm going to assemble them. And I found a couple of tomatoes that um, I had in my, cleaned out my fridge yesterday. So I organized, I had two containers of tomatoes, so I kind of went through them, took out the bad ones and kept the good ones. So I have some tomatoes, I'm gonna throw in his tossed salad. But um, I think, I don't know if I'm gonna make that TikTok pasta tonight because these are all the tomatoes I have, okay? I'm gonna go through them again because I left them out last night and some of them are a little bit, eh. I think they're getting a little bit dried up, a little bit wrinkly, but I figure with that TikTok pasta, it's no big deal, right? Anyways, uh, so I'm going to, yeah, maybe I'll make the TikTok pasta tonight because I do have feta cheese in there and that would be really easy. Get a couple things out of my fridge for this pantry challenge. Like I said earlier, or in the earlier video, I wanna try to get um, 
use as much as my fresh produce first so it doesn't go to waste. So yeah, so that's what we'll have to cook with. So as I've said in previous videos too, my son, my oldest son is celiac, so he can't have gluten or, or wheat. So I just had the um, buns out, put them in that dish. He's not home, he went skiing today. So what I'm gonna do is wash my hands here because I can't have any cross-contamination. I have already, last night, um, shredded some of that cheese I had. So I have it all here in this container. So what I'm gonna do is, I can't, like I said, can't have cross-contamination. So usually what we'll do is we'll chop stuff up. I know it's not contaminated. And then as I need it, I will take it and transfer it into another bowl so that if there is a chance of cross-contamination, it's just the stuff that I'm using, not the stuff I originally had shredded. And when he comes home, he'll probably have nachos and then he can take this cheese right out of here. So I put four hot dog buns in the pan, but I have five total. So I think I'm gonna try to make five out of it. Instead of, I'll see how it goes. Instead of putting four meatballs, maybe I'll only put three meatballs. We'll see how it works. Anyways, I got some cheese there. Put the rest of this back in the fridge. And I'll assemble the subs, or the, yeah, the meatball subs. All right, so. Actually, I think three meatballs, three meatballs might be okay with this. Put a little bit of sauce on there. Actually, it's perfect. Actually, I should also try that sauce. Just in case I need to add something to it. Nope, I think it's okay. Just wait it. And then top it off with the cheddar. I would have really liked to have mozzarella for this, but since I don't have any, it's in the freezer downstairs and I have cheddar up here that's thawed already. Cheddar's gotta do. Like I said, I'm not buying any groceries, so if I don't have what I want, I have to supplement or improvise. And as far as I'm concerned, cheese is cheese. Here we have it, and I'll put those in the oven. So I didn't have enough meatballs. I, I only had three left in my pot, so I took uh, three more out of out of the freezer and turned that on and let it simmer, heat those up. Philip meatball subs are in the oven. They're looking good. And now I'm just gonna make him his toss salad. So I'll put the lettuce in that I washed off and all the veggies I dumped, or <laughs> all the veggies I cut up, just dump them on. There. So that will be his lunch. So I just put the rest of the romaine lettuce in this dish. And I'm going to have Caesar for myself. Salad for myself. And the way I like to do Caesar salad, I actually have some Parmesan in the fridge too. And the way I like to do it is I just put it in these little containers. Instead of me trying to mix it up, I put my dressing in on top. Covered on these are those takeout containers. Um, you can buy them at Costco. Mm, Glad has them. Sometimes Boston Pizza will have them. Take a takeout, bring it home. I think the dishwasher safe at Boston Pizza. Anyways, there we go, mixed all up. I'll throw some Parmesan cheese. I'll look underneath to see if I have any um, croutons, and that'll be my lunch. So here's lunch. Here's Philip's three meatball subs and his toss salad. And I'm going to put mine in the oven to toast them up and my Caesar salad. Okay, so for supper tonight, we decided we were gonna make what they call that TikTok pasta, which will allow me to use up all of these tomatoes. 
So I have a pan here. I'm just, I'm cutting the tomatoes in, these cherry tomatoes in to two. I don't care if they're even or not. I just find myself after I cook this, I don't like the skins on them. So once they cook up, it's easier to pick a couple of the skins out of. Out of the pan, that's what I was trying to say. <laughs> All right, it also calls for um, garlic. I have a garlic here that I peeled the other day. to put in there's one clove put in probably three total so I planted garlic for the first time last year a um, little cute little story my mother called me and she said hey Don I have some garlic for you I left it on your table and I was like oh okay so I came home and I was searching for this garlic and I couldn't find it and I was thinking, she never left me no garlic. And then I finally found it. And it was one clove, or sorry, one bulb, one bulb of garlic. One bulb of garlic in a plastic bag. So I thought, hmm, what can I do with it? There's four cloves. One bulb, four cloves. So I had to do something with it and so I decided to plant them. I'm gonna sprinkle pepper all over this. And I think I'm supposed to use a little bit of olive oil. Drizzle it on. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I do this, but I'm gonna end up, I know, uh, probably putting more tomatoes on. And I'm gonna get my feta. Oh, I don't have my And this is feta we've already used, so I don't have a whole block, which is okay with me. Um, my daughter Georgia loves feta on things, so I'm just gonna drain the brine and see what I got left. I'm just gonna sprinkle this over the bottom. Wash my hands off, rinse them off, I should say. I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of this oil on top of the feta too. Put a little bit more in there. So it also calls for a shallot. I don't have any, but I do have a small onion I'm gonna throw in there with it. Thyme and the recipe that I have calls for pepper flakes. I'm not gonna use pepper flakes, but I thought I would put a, just a sprinkling of cayenne pepper on it. I'm trying to eat a little bit more hot stuff. I'm not a hot person. Hey, maybe I look a little okay. Haha, <laughs> just joking. Uh, I'm not a spicy person. I can be sassy, but I'm not spicy. Anyways, um, I don't like hot. Pepper to me is hot. Like black pepper is hot. So if I don't have to, I guess, oh, there it is. A little bit more olive oil on the... Onions. Sometimes I just can't think and do stuff at the same time. Don't know how that, that my brain doesn't work that way. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a little bit of cayenne pepper, just a little bit, sprinkle on. And I'm going to put this into the oven on what did it say? 400 for about an hour. So 400 for an hour. Okay, so the recipe calls for thyme. I don't have any fresh thyme. I probably have some dried, but I have some ground thyme that I've been wanting to get rid of. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of thyme on there. And it also calls for salt, but I don't think I'm gonna put salt in it. Wow, look at that. I put a big dent in those tomatoes. 
I don't think I'm gonna put salt in it because I find feta is a very salty cheese to begin with. So I can taste it afterwards and see if, if I want to. We're gonna have tortellini with it because my youngest boy, JT, he doesn't like any kind of this <laughs> sauce or anything like that. So what I'll do is he just likes, they call it stinky cheese and pasta. So he likes the tortellini shells. Um, they have you know, cheese stuffed in it and the rest of us will eat it, but he'll just eat that with parmesan. And into the oven it goes. So for about one hour, I'm actually gonna check it at 45 minutes on 400 degrees. Okay, so the sauce or the tomatoes, the TikTok video of pasta, <clears throat> sauce in the oven is almost done. I'm gonna cook up the pasta. I have two bags I brought up from the freezer, tortellini. I'm going to cook one and a little bit, and then I will save the other part, the other one, the other half, sorry. Oh my God, I can't talk today. The other half, um, when my boy comes home from hockey practice, I'll cook that up for him. So I took it out. This is what it looks like. And then you're supposed to take a spoon or whatever and mix it around. Quite hot. You're supposed to mix in the macaroni with it. So I'm gonna mix the macaroni in with it. I'm just gonna add the pasta right to this dish. Hopefully be it'll enough for everybody. I've never made this with this kind of pasta in it before. I've always used penne or fusilli, but looks good. So there, it's all done. I was kind of skeptical at first, thinking that there'd be either not enough sauce to cover it or not enough pasta, but I think this is fine. So microwave my tea for the third time today. Lunch is gonna be the leftovers of uh, the fit or the TikTok pasta. And I have pork chops. I'm trying to thaw them out here. They're still quite frozen. Um, once I get them at least halfway done, I'll put them in the fridge and we'll have those for supper. It's only the afternoon, it's only 1.30. My son came home from a friend's house last night. He wants me to make him that tortellini pasta because he didn't eat last night for supper. And so I thought while I'm waiting for the water to boil and cook those up for his lunch, I'm going to peel the potatoes for tonight's supper. So usually the way I generally guess or gauge how many potatoes I need to cook is I say about a regular sized potato per person, but these potatoes are kind of small and wonky. So I'm going to say two per person. So we have five of us. So I need about 10 potatoes like the size the size would be a, a regular size potato I'd say so I'd say one for that so one two three four and five of us so I have just a few potatoes left one two three four five six if they're quite small I'm going to just end up peeling the rest of them so this is it for potatoes for us, unless I have five potatoes um, that I've already bottled. But uh, I'm gonna peel them up and then I'm gonna put some of these mashed potatoes away. Philip will sometimes take the mashed potatoes and fry them up in the morning and add egg and ham or bacon or something like that. So he'll have like fried eggs and mashed potatoes in the morning for breakfast. So I'm gonna peel these and get them ready, put them in a, a pot with cold water and then just let them sit. So I just put the pasta in the pot here and this pasta is not gluten free. So even between putting the pasta in and over here, peeling the potatoes, I have to wash my hands in between 
because I don't need the cross-contamination. Even if I'm gonna rinse these potatoes, just to make sure. So, mix those up, put the spatula down, gonna wash my hands, and then I'm gonna come back to peel potatoes. So I got my potatoes all peeled in this pot. I'm gonna put it in cold water, in, or I put cold water in it and put it at the back of the burner. My son's tortellini, I put a little butter in it. Um, maybe a little bit of salt. And he wants what I call stinky cheese, Parmesan. So there, his lunch is ready, but I was peeling potatoes, and as I was peeling them, I'm getting kind of nervous. If this is the first, very first week of the pantry challenge, and I'm already at a potatoes, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go the whole two months. So, we'll see how far I can go, but I might have to decide to get a bag of potatoes. Hopefully it's not going to be till the end of January or the second week of February. But like I said, my family is a big meat and potatoes family. So I might have to break and do that. I wasn't prepared for it. I just decided last minute to let's do the challenge. Okay, so we're going to make sheet pan pork chops with Brussels sprouts and apples. And I just took my pork chops out of the fridge. I'm gonna pat them off to get a little bit of the moisture off them. Actually, uh, when I, I don't actually buy pork chops. What I do is I usually go to Costco and I get the pork loin. And then when I bring the pork loin home, I cut it into, I slice it and then I put them in freezer bags. So they're just like boneless pork chops. So get some of the moisture off. I'm going to season them with salt and pepper. Salt. So I'm going to use this pepper. Okay, so it says to preheat my oven to 425 and I already got my baking sheets and parchment paper ready. When I, after I peeled the potatoes earlier, I already did diced up or cut in half my Brussels sprouts. So those are ready. I also cut up, it's, the recipe calls for a gala apple. Well, I didn't have a gala apple. So I have a Cortland pantry challenge. Use what you got. So, the recipe calls for three tablespoons of olive oil. Mm, one, two, three. Three tablespoons of olive oil. Three, sorry, two. Two tablespoons of brown sugar. Spoon of rosemary. I only have dried stuff here, so I'm gonna guess. A little bit more just for good luck. And it calls for a quarter of a teaspoon of sage. Again, I only have fresh stuff, not fresh stuff, sorry. Um, I only have dried stuff. This is from my own garden. So I'm just going to take what I have, I dehydrate it, put it in there. Guess I should mix that up a little bit. So it's actually quite thick. I might put a little bit more olive oil on it, just so that it's a little more runny. Put 
put in my Brussels sprouts. I chopped up about 20 Brussels sprouts and two apples. I did when I cut up the apples, I also um, put them in a little bit of lemon juice, even though they're gonna turn brown as I cook them anyways. I just don't like the look of them. Mix those up best I can, trying to get all the pieces coated. And it says set aside. So then it says to whisk together two eggs, I got two eggs in there, and a quarter of a cup of milk. This is going to be for when we bread our pork chops. So I'll put it in an egg wash and then I'll put it in the bread crumbs and then onto the pan. So next is to make our bread crumbs. So I have panko bread crumbs, it call, or calls for panko bread crumbs. I don't have panko bread crumbs so I'm going to use my bread crumbs that I have. And if you didn't know, um, I have like the Samsung fridge with the tablet in it. It's the best damn thing I ever had. I can put my recipes on here and I just go back and forth. So it calls for one and a half cups of panko, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then quarter teaspoon of onion powder, oregano, basil, thyme, parsley, paprika. Okay, so a cup and a half. breadcrumbs are quite coarse so I think I'm going to use a half a cup of breadcrumbs they really don't have that much um, pork chops I only have six pork chops and I'm going to include about a quarter of a cup of gluten-free flour so my breadcrumbs are gluten-free because as you guys know my son is celiac my oldest so I tend to find recipes I like and do the best I can by um, substituting regular stuff that might have gluten in it, like breadcrumbs, and with stuff that does not. So, for example, you can get panko breadcrumbs that are gluten-free. I just have run out of them, so I'm going to use my other breadcrumbs. All right, so we're going to now add teaspoon of garlic pepper, I'm sorry. Half teaspoon of garlic powder. And a quarter teaspoon. Not going in the order that it called for, but I'm just gonna do it, whatever I pick up. That's not gonna work. I only have ground time, so I'm just going to use it up. And then, smoked paprika. Again, it's my own stash. Probably more than what I'm supposed to have, but hey, it's in there. Parsley. One of the biggest concerns with people that eat gluten-free too is cross-contamination. So something, they might not die from it, getting gluten, but something as simple as buttering your toast in the morning and then say you're making mashed potatoes and you decide to put um, butter in your potatoes and it's cross-contaminated with a breadcrumb from your toast in the morning. 
that could trigger them into not a very good situation. All right, so the only thing I have left to do is onion powder, and I don't think I have any onion powder. I think I have to use diced onion. So I should have. So I have, yeah, dry chopped onion. Good enough for me. I'm gonna put more than what it calls for just because the chances of getting a little bit of this onion on everything is pretty slim. So now I'm gonna mix that up. Okay, so I salt and peppered my pork chops. It says to put in the egg wash. Slick little buggers. Into the bread mix, pushing it in to make sure they're coated. And then onto the breaking sheet. So I got parchment paper there and I'm just gonna coat it with a little bit of avocado oil spray there. So there's one. Okay, so I'm just putting the apples and whoops, the Brussels sprouts all over the pan with the pork chops. Now remember when you're doing this, when you're making stuff, whoops, I'm gonna scrape this out. I want all that little brown sugar and flavoring as much as I can get on those apples and Brussels sprouts. So as I was trying to say, remember when you are coating pork chops or any meat at all to make sure that you do not keep your egg wash or your breadcrumbs because they've already been contaminated with the raw meat. So I'm gonna throw those in the compost. So here's my pork chops, apples, and Brussels sprouts. I'm gonna put those in the oven. My oven was preheated to 425. Put those in there and I'll check on them. It says to let cook for about 12 minutes and then to flip the pork chops. So I'm gonna do that. And in the meantime, I'm gonna wipe up this mess and then put my potatoes on. All right, we'll check on them in about 12 minutes. And it says I should flip the pork chops. <clears throat> First time I've ever flipped pork chops, like she can make pork chops. I've never done this before. Let me know. Do you guys ever flip your pork chops when you're doing shake and bake? And it says for, put it back in for 12 more minutes. Um, I'm always paranoid about stuff being cooked, so I'll be honest with you. I know I'm going to go over the 12 minutes, but I'm going to set the timer. First, I'm going to turn the timer off. And then I'll set it again for another 12 minutes. I'm gonna, I'll do 15 just because I know. And hopefully by then our potatoes will be cooking. So there we have it. Um, I had to make some corn because my youngest son is probably not gonna eat the apples and the Brussels sprouts and I want him to have some kind of vegetable. So we're at the last day of pantry challenge. For breakfast, I'm having banana bread again and pears. We got a fruit um, basket for Christmas. So I'm trying to get that stuff all eaten up before it goes to waste. My daughter has put in a couple of cookies. I think that must be her breakfast. Those Pillsbury cookies that you get. Um, and she had some yogurt. Philip had oatmeal. And of course, he's already eaten it. And away he went. So I guess today's just kind of fend for yourself. Forgot to add, Philip went and got me a Tim Hortons tea. So I'll have that. I didn't buy it, but like I said earlier, if he buys it, I'll drink it. Best lunch ever. Made with love. So I have four bananas left right here from uh, that fruit basket that I said that I had gotten. And so when I ate most of the banana bread this week and that original piece that was supposed to go down to Philip's father didn't go, I thought maybe I should take these bananas in and make them another banana bread. This time I think I'm gonna add chocolate chips. So for those of you that do gluten-free cooking, like I said in the last little clip, I tried to do um, modify all the recipes I have to gluten-free because of my oldest son is celiac. 
it just cuts down on the cross contamination. I don't have to worry about separating anything and then whatever I make, he can eat as well. There are things in our house like bread, um, waffles, those Eggo waffles that I, I buy my youngest son, uh, pizza pockets, you know, when I buy stuff like that. That I don't worry so much about because they are actually in a contained package and I can keep those separate. But overall, all the cooking that I do, I would have to honestly say 95% of it is gluten free. Now, Hunter, my oldest son, if he's going to work, or so sometimes he works mornings, sometimes he works nights. If he's working um, a night shift, I try to cook the day before and cook extra so that he could take it for his supper the next day. Doesn't always work out. Um, he he works here in our community, in Nova First Nation. He works here sometimes. So if there's a night that he's working a night shift up the road here, um, and we want something that has gluten in it, like the other night we had the tortellini, I knew Hunter was not going to eat that TikTok pasta. So I will take the things that I do have gluten in and I will create it then and I will either give him leftovers from the day before or from lunchtime or if I have to um, we will use the uh, gluten-free pizza that they have at Costco and I have pepperoni Chris's brother pepperoni which is gluten-free I'll just cut that up and put it on his his pizza and then he can I can either drop it off to him or he can run down on his break and grab his pizza so yeah, so that's what I try to do. So I also wanted to share with you guys um, this book. It's called Baked to Perfection. And it was gifted to Hunter. And I honestly have read through it. I really, really like it. Um, the author is Katrina. I don't want to kill this, but... Sir Melch, maybe? Maybe the genius style? I'm not sure. Anyways... Um, I've looked through it, read through it at the very beginning. It actually explained things, the science behind it. Um, my background is I have my first degree in horticulture and my second degree in education. So of course, anything science related and will teach me something I'm all on board for. I like to understand the way things work. So with this book, I really like the fact that she explains to you why and how and ex actually what is going on. Um, if I can find it right quick, something as simple as gluten-free flours. It has the list and it tells you the protein content, the water absorption capacity, and the assignment. So starch, protein, um, additional, whatever it is used for. So it also talks about xanthan gum and psyllium husk and when and where to use it. And it also talks about all the other things. Now, I'm going to try to find it quickly. It talks about equipment. Um, and I think it might have been in the muffins section. Here it is. Oh, lost it just as quick. Cupcakes and muffins. I really enjoy this because she gives illustrations like this and explains supposed to be a cupcake, also supposed to be a cupcake, meant to be a muffin, and a very confused muffin. So it shows you the different tops and how they work out. If you go to the next page, I love this. It explains to you, especially with gluten-free, it explains to you um, high oven temperature and cold muffin batter. This is how it is, this is how it will rise. A low oven temperature and room temperature cupcake batter. So it tells you the difference between a muffin batter and a cupcake batter. Why do you wanna have this dome on the top of your muffin, right? What we all have and some of us don't like, the muffin top. And then as a cupcake, you probably don't want that type of top to it because you're usually putting icing on it. So if you are gluten-free, I highly re recommend this book. Um, I've done some, some recipes in here, not all of them. I really wish I had the time, and I might in the new year, but to be able to sit down and actually explore the bread and actually make it. And the other thing I wanted to do in the new year is puff pastry. So maybe one day during this challenge I do it, maybe not. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to make what they have in here on page 324 is chocolate chip banana bread. It's so good. For those of you that are gluten-free, it's actually, or has to change to gluten-free, you wouldn't even know it was gluten-free. 
Another thing with this recipe too, I really like is majority of it is weight based. So I find that my items come out better if they're weighed. So it started off, it says to uh, adjust the oven shelf to the middle position and preheat to 180, which is 300 degrees. Sorry, 350, 350. And then I'm gonna grease this up. Um, I also wanted to try to use up some of the bacon fat that I have. So I cleaned out a container that I had in the fridge and I'm going to grease up my, my loaf pan now. I'm gonna set my loaf pan aside. It also now, when I start, it says mix the bananas with the lemon juice. So it calls for three bananas or 330 peeled weight mashed. And it says three tablespoons of lemon juice. Mix the bananas with the lemon juice to prevent oxidation and browning and set aside until needed. I really don't care if they're brown because they're gonna break. And yeah, these are actually perfect bananas. The outside is brown, super, super soft, so I know that. But the inside, woo! inside isn't brown and dark which I really appreciate now did you know the longer that you let your bananas sit the sweeter they get just to let you know oh should turn this on so I need about 330 grams one banana is 126 if you hear music in the background it's just my youngest son he's in the shower and he needs to listen to music all the time for some reason so I'll apologize ahead of time if it gets too loud. That banana as well is super soft, but there's no brown to it. That is 230, 232. I'll take the smaller one out of the two. Probably won't need the whole thing. Take some off, uh, I'll go half. 271. 300, ooh, 322, I'm gonna take the chance. Leave it at So I have my bananas all mashed for some reason. Uh, I only have one fork in my drawer because forks are missing in our house all the time. So I have 227 or 222 grams of bananas here. That's okay with me. It also calls for three teaspoons of lemon juice, which is actually one tablespoon. So I'm gonna put that in there, not because I think I need the liquid, but in case I need the acid for something, because we all know that baking is a science. So if we need that for something, it's in there. So I'll mix that up. So mix that up, set it aside, and then it says in a bowl, whisk together the melted butter and the sugar until pale and fluffy. No need to use a stand mixer or hand mixer. I'm going to anyways, just because I like my KitchenAid. I'm going to put the uh, butter and I've actually decided to get rid of the butter. I'm going to use bacon fat, um, which is no different than lard, a little bit saltier. So if there's any salt in the recipe, I'm not going to add that. And if there's a little bit of bacon bits in it, that's okay, because it's probably gonna taste better anyways. So I got 150 grams of the fat in there and then I was supposed to add 150 grams of the brown sugar, mix it up until it is light, pale, and fluffy. It's starting to look good. It is looking paler, a little bit more fluffy. I'm just gonna scrape it down to make sure I got all the sugar. In there. So the recipe says once this is light and fluffy to add in two eggs right here. I've been getting about two eggs a day, two to three eggs a day from my chickens because it is winter time. As you can see outside, not as much daylight so they don't lay as productively. Um, Hunter's friend actually came yesterday and even though I'm not buying any groceries for the next two months, I'm not making my kids go without if they don't, if they want to buy it. So what I'm saying is I'm not going to give them any of my money to go out and buy groceries or anything like that. But if they want to take their own money and they wanted to buy bacon and eggs, more power to them. So Hunter's friend the other day was coming and he called him. He's like, Hey, you don't mind picking up bacon and eggs on the way, would you? 
it's kind of funny because we do get two to three eggs a day, but my son probably eats four eggs to five eggs a day anyways. So his friend did purchase them. These ones, like I said, are really yellow, light yellow compared to my golden orange color that we get from our, our eggs. So I'm gonna use those up. Eventually we will get back to having one or two eggs and hopefully as the days get longer, we'll get more eggs. But for now, I'm using what's in my house. So two eggs, it calls for one teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. I don't have any vanilla bean paste, but I do have vanilla that I make myself. So I just have vodka in there and I put in, actually there's five vanilla beans in here and I just filled it with vodka, put the vanilla beans in. Actually, I think I sliced the vanilla beans just to get more flavor out of it. Put them in the bottle, um, filled it with vodka, put the cover on it and I put it in my closet for about six months. I think next time I go to make it, I'm gonna put a little bit more vanilla bean in it, but hey, it does the trick. It smells just like vanilla. It's pure vanilla anyways. So it calls for one teaspoon. So I'm just gonna give a splash in with the eggs. So I'm gonna add all that to my mixer. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. There goes the two eggs. And then of course, all the bananas that I had mashed up. Sift in the gluten-free flour blend, almond flour, baking powder, baking soda, xanthan gum, salt, cinnamon, and nutmeg, and mix well until you get a smooth batter with no flour clumps. So the gluten-free flour I'm going to use today is Bob's um, Bob's Red Mill gluten-free one-to-one baking flour, and the almond flour I tend to get is the Kirkland brand. Honest to God, I find that cooking with almond flour in with my gluten-free baking is a game changer. I've tried many, many recipes trying to perfect them just using the uh, flour mix, and I find everything is so dry. So now I specifically go and look for recipes that include gluten-free flour. I mean, sorry, almond flour in with the gluten-free flour and I find everything comes out a lot more moist and it doesn't crumble as easily. So those are the two that I'm, I'm using today. 225 gluten-free flour blend, uh, 50 grams of almond flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, uh, oh, three quarters of baking soda, and then it asks for a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of salt, but because I'm using the bacon fat, I'm not gonna put the salt in there. And then it's asked for a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. So I ran out of um, cinnamon and actually ground cinnamon and nutmeg. So I have real cinnamon here, cinnamon sticks and nutmeg. So what I did is um, I just used the little grater on my cheese grater, put that in there. I'm sure people are going to bite on it because it's a lot bigger pieces than it is if it's ground cinnamon. So I'm going to add this to and I'm actually going to switch. Can you hear the music? That would be my son. Okay, so I'm going to actually switch attachments from the whisk. To the beater. And mix that up. So I'm trying to buy a lot of my stuff in bulk. So Costco, when I do go, I got the big bag of chippets. I don't know if I got them at Costco or Walmart, but I tend to use these, um, it would be classical tomato sauce jars. And I really like them because they're actually mason jars. So the regular mason lids and rings will fit on them. So I usually just fill one of these up and keep it under my cupboard so that when I need chocolate chips, I have them. And this big bag will go back into my cupboard pantry. It's easier so I don't have to pull it out and put it back. All the recipe calls for 100 or 175 grams of dark or milk chocolate chips. I'm gonna waste them out just to see how much they are. I have a half a cup measuring cup here. So 
So 100 is just about a half a cup, a little bit over. So I'm gonna actually take this out. I'm gonna use my spatula. I'd rather fold in the chocolate chips that way. So about a half a cup of chocolate chips are in there. Eh, I'm gonna put a couple extra just for, for good luck, right? Put those in away. Set my scale over here. music I apologize oh to be 15 again eh so there banana bread is in the loaf loaf pan bake about an one hour until well risen golden brown on top and inserted toothpick pick comes out clean with a few stray crumbs attached. The banana bread browns too quickly, cover it with foil. All right, sign your shot up, bake until done. Let's see what we can do. After that, it says to allow cool to 15 to 30 minutes and then transfer to a wire rack. So let it cool in the loaf pan for about 15, 30 minutes. Little rack. And it goes 350. I'm gonna heat my tea for the third time and then I'm gonna get this kitchen clean. Okay, so here's the recipe. Two pounds of beef roast. I have steak in there. I'm gonna cut that. Two or three tablespoons of olive oil, one onion sliced, one can of water chestnuts. I'm not using water chestnuts, um, but I do have some freeze. I didn't get that. Could oh, you try again? Suri just loves talking to me. Anyways, I found some freeze dried zucchini that I have and some freeze dried cauliflower. I'm gonna throw that in just because I also have more um, more juice in the mandarin oranges than what it calls for. So let's see, after not doing the chestnuts, not doing the bok choy, I have one teaspoon of grated fresh ginger, half cup of soy sauce, one package, one four ounce package of mushrooms, I'm not doing mushrooms, um, one teaspoon of cornstarch, two cups of hot water, one, two tablespoons of beef base, one can of mandarin oranges, two cups of rice, four cups of water. So, in order to do this, it says to freeze the beef. That's okay, I'm gonna cut it up. I'm going to saute it in a pan over medium-high heat. Ooh. Olive oil in meat in small batches, and then I'm gonna put them in the crock pot. To the saute pan, I'm gonna add then the onion um, until it's softened and clear. Then I'm gonna add the ginger and the soy sauce. I'm also gonna put the zucchini and the cauliflower in there, and hopefully it will rehydrate a little bit. Saute for three minutes until the bok choy starts. Like I said, I'm not doing the bok choy. So after that, then I'm gonna put that on top of the beef. And then in a bowl, I mix the water and the beef base. When the beef base is dissolved, add the cornstarch and drain the juice from the oranges into the bowl. Refrigerate the oranges for later. Cover the crock pot and set for low for 10 to 12, or eight to 10 hours. I'm assuming that here, when I put the water and the beef base in, I'm going to add it to the crock pot. I'm not gonna put it on low for eight to 10 hours. I'm actually gonna do it on high and then I'm gonna see how we make out. It's 
So what I did was to drain the juice off the mandarin oranges, I put a hole in the top for the air to come in and a hole at the bottom for the juice to come out. Just put it over and I just squeeze the container to get all that juice out. So here's the beef that I took out a couple days and put in the fridge. I'm going to actually just salt and pepper it right now so that it will be seasoned. One actually has a little bit of ice crystals left in it. But that's okay. It's been in the fridge for two days. It's pretty much thaw. Now for pepper. Okay, so the first batch of meat is pretty much brown. I'm not gonna cook it all the way because the slow cooker is gonna cook some of it. So I'm gonna transfer that into the slow cooker pot. I'm gonna add a little bit more bacon grease. that just a couple of seconds there to warm up and then I'm going to add this beef into it. Okay, so looks up meat and we're going to actually check on our banana bread that's in the oven. I had to turn my burner up a little bit more because I think it was too much meat. So let's check out the oven, my banana bread. Ooh, looks good. I gotta go grab a toothpick. Right, so I'll put this in. Oh, I don't think it's done. Oh, might be. No, I don't think so. Feels a little bit too jiggly. So I'm just gonna leave it in there for probably about 10 more minutes and then I'll check it on again. Okay, I turned my stove up to max. I'm gonna get this cooked up here. I put my kettle on to boil the hot water because I'm gonna have to dissolve the bouillon, onions, cook until soft, and then ingredients, ginger, soy sauce, and then saute for about three minutes. And I'm going to, in the meantime, I think I'm going to, because I like to have it layered, I'm gonna put in my cauliflower, I did not rehydrate it, and my zucchini. Did not rehydrate that either. It's in there, it's just freeze dried. Um, this beef looks like it's done, I'll put that on top. I want it to get as much flavor as it possibly can, so I would like it to rehydrate with whatever liquid I have in there. Alright, so... Beef is in. Onions are in. I'm gonna turn my heat down just a little bit sautés these and then I'm going to add in a half a cup of soy sauce and the teaspoon of ginger. So one thing that this does not call for, which I'm actually surprised, is garlic. So I like garlic. So as my onions are sautéing there, I think I'm going to add a little bit of onion, or sorry, garlic powder. Maybe I'm going to ruin the flavor. I don't know. I just feel like it's missing and it should be there. Okay, soy sauce. Get that ready. One teaspoon of ginger. I have a half teaspoon here. So there's one. Two. I have quite a bit of ginger left, so I'll just wrap that up and put it in the fridge. Maybe I'll use it for something else this week. 
Soy sauce. Okay, maybe I can't open it. There we go. Soy sauce that I use is our compliment soy sauce and it has the gluten free on it. A lot of people don't know that soy sauce is um, has gluten in it, but what it is, it's the malt vinegar or barley. Malt barley, I think it is. Malt comes from barley and I think there's malt vinegar in regular soy sauce. I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. So we use our compliments one. I have the less sodium and then this is going to call for one or half a half a cup of soy sauce. So my onions are sauteing. I'm going to add in the soy sauce and the ginger. I'm going to let that simmer for a couple of minutes and then I'm going to put together the next sauce. And it says I need two cups of boiling water. So that's pretty much a two cup measuring cup. So two cups of water and I need to dissolve my bouillon. I only have vegetable bouillon. That's going to have to do. I like to break this up into little pieces and then just stir it to get it to dissolve. So it said to drain the orange, I'm assuming I'm oranges um, and set aside, which I did. I'm assuming that we're supposed to use this liquid. So I'm going to pour in almost half the liquid that we got out of it because with cornstarch, um, just like any other slurry, I like to not add it straight to hot water or hot liquid. I'd rather mix it up. It calls for two tablespoons of cornstarch. Mix it up in a cool or room temperature first before I add it to it. So I'm going to add that here. I actually moved all my liquid into the frying pan and I got out the whisk so I can make sure that all the bouillon had dissolved. And I didn't want to miss any of the juices or any of the flavoring that was from the onions and the soy sauce. So there. So this is mixed. I'm going to add it to this. I have my, my stove off. I'm going to add it to this. Make sure it's all mixed in there. Now I'm going to add that to the other way to the slow cooker that I have here. Spread it out. I can see the cauliflower in there. I can see the zucchini in there. There's tons of liquid. Hopefully when I put this on the slow cooker, it will thicken up and the zucchini and the cauliflower will rehydrate itself. Cooker. I'm going to turn the slow cooker to high, cover it. We have my son is going to hockey tonight again, ice time, um, with him and his friends at six o'clock, six to seven. So it is five o'clock now. So I'm happy with this just being on high for a couple hours. I feel like everything in there is cooked already. The beef is pretty much cooked. Um, so hopefully this is just enough time for it to soak up some of the uh, flavor and yeah, so then I'll, I just have to make rice. I'll make that in my Instapot and there's supper. So I'm going to check on the banana bread. Oh yeah, that looks perfect. So I'm going to take it out and put it on the rack. Let it sit there for 30 about 30 minutes. Turn my oven off and we will dump it out in a second. Okay, so banana bread is taken out, wrapped up. I sliced it, figured the kids. It would be easier for them to grab and go. So here's tonight's supper. So week one is complete of the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. If you would like to hit subscribe, you will get notified of any new videos that I upload during this challenge for the January and February months. 
Um, I'm going to try to keep to gluten-free recipes as much as I possibly can. There's going to be one or two that are not going to be gluten-free, but majority of them are going to be gluten-free. So if you have a wheat allergy or celiac, um, feel free to follow me, the whole pantry challenge, and hopefully you'll get some new ideas and new tips. All right, folks, just want to say thanks, and we will see you next week for week two.